Sunday, we like to partake in a few things, and one of them is we like to celebrate the birthdays of our brothers and sisters here at New Hope Volcano. So if you can join me in celebrating and wishing them a happy birthday. Um, on my birthday list for June 1st, I have Pastor Ray and Auntie Lonnie's anniversary. Yeah. We catching up, Stacy. We catching up. Hello, boy. <laughs> Hello, boy. All right. So on the sixth, we have Shannon Fisher. Happy birthday, Shannon. We love you. Happy birthday, Shannon. On the seventh, we have Andy Sandra Julio. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. On the ninth, we have our sister Margaret. I saw her. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, on the ninth as well, we have Coro, Coro Smith. Hey, Coro. 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 Uh, on the twenty-first, we have Kayulani Young. Happy hey, birthday! Hey, 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 hey. On the twenty-fourth, we have Ernie Baker. Happy, hey, happy birthday, Ernie! Hey, 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 hey. And on the thirtieth, we have two birthdays. We have Uncle Larry. Oh, yeah. happy birthday, hey, Larry! Hey, 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 hey. And Betsy Ba, happy birthday, Betsy. Hey, happy birthday, Betsy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday. We love you all. Happy birthday. Uh, we also like to open up service with a bit, a bit of the word and some prayer. And this morning word, this morning's word comes from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, where uh, Paul is speaking to the Lord and he asks the Lord three times to remove this thorn from his side. And in verse 9, the Lord said to him, My grace is sufficient for you, yeah. for my power is perfected in weakness. And Paul's response to the Lord was, Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast in my weakness mm -hmm. so that the power of, of Christ may dwell in Thank me. You, Lord. Therefore, you, Lord. I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distress, with persecutions, with difficulties mm -hmm. for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's bow our heads this morning in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. And yes, Lord, we know that your grace is sufficient for us. For we know that we are saved by grace through faith. And so we hang our hope on that grace that we are blessed with eternal life by the sacrifice made by our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, on the cross. And this morning we come together, though many we are one, one body, the body of Christ, to honor you and to worship you, to glorify you, to be in your presence, to put you first in our lives, Father. We are so grateful for all that you do for who you are in our lives and who we are in Christ. And so this morning we worship you, Lord. 
We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, and we pray in your Son, Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So Psalm 150 is something that's very familiar, I think, to many of you. So see if you can finish it. Okay, so the beginning of Psalm 150, this particular verse says, Let everything that has breath, and can you finish it? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
you are our way, our truth, and our life. And we plead for no other way, no other truth, no other life, but that of the kingdom of heaven for us here on earth. In your most righteous name we pray, and all God's children say, Amen, amen, and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't you take your seats for the last few minutes? Oh. 
Praise God. And get all mic'd up here. Okay, so um, I chose a metaphor for today's uh, communion medication. Meditation, excuse me. It is medication. But anyhow, um, railroad trains. And Unless you're like me or Jason or Pastor Ray or a few of other of us in here, most of us don't read theology textbooks, okay? At least not for fun anyway. And God knows that. So it's, um, it's, so it is that the New Testament abounds with all these metaphors and similes and life object examples. Things which make the point clear by portraying it in an everyday sort of picture. Are you with me? <clears throat> so you'll remember some of them, right? So Paul's dissertation on the whole armor of God was probably inspired by the fact that when he wrote it, he was what? Chained to a couple of Roman soldiers. Amen. Right? Christ's parable of the sower and the soils would be familiar to the farmers of his day and the gardeners of ours. And those among us who have remodeled a house in any way can certainly see the point of the parable of the builders of the house upon the rock and the sand. We continue to do this today. If you look back to a conventional hymnal with songs dating back to the 1800s, it won't be long before you find metaphors about the sea and ships, heaven of rest, lower lights, and the old and the old gospel ship are some that I found um, as I was surfing through worship music on Google. 
The use of metaphors in songs in church has progressed into the 20th century. In particular, one to one outstanding picture I remember, the steam locomotive. You guys remember steam locomotives, right? If you've ever traveled on such a train or watched an old western, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The rhythm of the pistons and the wheels was borrowed by many artists, right? If you listen even now to the southern gospel style music, right? The rhythm of that engine can still be found quite easily, right? Older Christians remember Jesus on the main line? Yeah? Or that song that we just seen, right? I see the Lord. You can you can hear the pistons in there. <clears throat> And you're probably saying, okay, Kale, where are you going with this, right? The reason I chose metaphors is that both the ship and the railroad engine represent a voyage. Going somewhere we have not been or returning home. I hope the picture I'm painting for you is easy to grasp. For the Christian is a pilgrim in this world on a voyage from sin to heaven. If you've ever thought of the Lord's Supper in that light, or if have you ever thought of it like that, the elements themselves, the bread, the wine, are common enough. Christ gave them new meanings while adapting older meanings to the same cause. When we think of the bread, we think it is excellent nourishment and adaptable in many ways, including some which involve peanut butter and Nutella. That was a joke. <clears throat> it is the food of a mature Christian, in other words. But please, remember that bread doesn't last very long. You need to keep on kneading it more and more. We think of wine. Wine is an excellent antiseptic, right? It's used for cleansing wounds in ancient times and a reasonable anesthetic as well. In contrast to bread, it keeps quite well for a long time. So there you have it. Bread is nourishment for the soul. We need each and every day. Wine is a cleanser or a painkiller which will last forever. We need him every hour and we will go with him forever and ever. Amen. So as we take our um, sacraments this morning, um, everybody get their bread out and take them together. <clears throat> when Jesus was at the table at the last Passover meal, he took the bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he said, take this each and every one of you and eat from it. For this is my body, which will be broken for you. Let's take our prayer. And in the same manner, when he was done, he took the cup. He gave thanks. And he said, take this, each of you, and drink from it. For this is a representation of my blood, which will be spilled for you and an everlasting new covenant. Let's drink. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We know that it was should have been us up on that cross, Father God. But you loved us so much that you used and sent your only son to take our punishment for us. And we're eternally grateful for that, Father. Father, I ask that you continue to bless each and every person here, Father. Shower them with your love. Shower them with your peace and understanding. But most of all, Father, just shower them with Jesus. In your mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
And so I was going to let you greet one another, but Pastor Jason said, no greeting for you. <laughs> Okay, but you can shake hands with shake hands with two two people and then take your seats before J Pastor Jason scolds you. <laughs> so just a quick early announcement, um, and I said this last week. I'll say it the next couple of weeks until Chris goes on vacation. Um, uh, and that, that Sunday that she does go on vacation, I will come right up onto the stage and we will move right into the next bit. Okay, so we can keep the YouTube nice and tight so we don't have to, we don't have to edit too much things out. Uh, so we have some announcements for you this morning. Before we get into announcements, as most of you know, the first Sunday of the month, we partake in communion, we celebrate birthdays, and we also pray over all the kids. And so we'd like to ask all the Keiki 18 and under to please come forward, come to the stage, and we will pray for you. Auntie Stacy will pray for you. Don't be shy. Don't be shamed. If this is your first time, all the Keiki can come up and be blessed this morning. Keith Jr., my son, and everybody. I see some Keiki outside if you want to come in and be blessed. Yeah, we'll get Nice job, girls. Alrighty. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. All right. Is this it? This is all we have today. Mason, Elena, come up. <laughs> All right, so I have the honor and privilege to pray for you guys. If we as a congregation could just lay our hands towards the kids. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, humbled and grateful for the children that stand before you here today. We thank you for their hearts, their willingness to be here. We know that they are yours before they are ours. And we know that no matter how much we love them, Lord, we cannot love them more than you love them. We thank you for that love, Lord. We pray that you embrace them, Lord. We pray that you continue to be their lead and their guide in everything that they do. We pray that you continue to send your Holy Spirit to live in them, Lord, so that you can use them as a vessel to go out into this world and be a, an example of the light and the love of Christ. We thank you for, we lift up our kids that um, are graduating this year, Lord, and we pray that you go before them and make their paths straight. We pray that they desire a relationship with you. We lift up our Backyard Kids Club that's coming up this week, Lord, and we thank you for the opportunity to bring in children in the community to our church to learn about Jesus, to have fun and fellowship with other kids, even if it's just one seed that we plant, even if it's one child that turns to you, even if it's one parent that comes with their child that wants to <coughs> seek salvation through Jesus Christ, Lord, let your good, perfect, pleasing will be done. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you are yet to do in our children's lives. May all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor be yours. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So two 
quick announcements I have. Um, yes. How many of you know the devil's a liar? The devil's a liar. Yes. Right? Okay. So we're having some issues this morning with our audio. Just hang with us. Our amp is going out. So it's crackling in and out. So just hang in there and pay close attention. Thank you. <laughs> the devil is a liar, but greater is he that is in us than he who is within the world. All right, so first announcement, Backyard Kids Club. We're having it this week. Um, I see some new faces. So I just wanted to say, if you have children or grandchildren that you want to be a part of this, ages four to 11, please invite them, please bring them. Um, if you have volunteered to participate in any way, please come find me so that I can give you a schedule for the week. Um, if you haven't been here and you want to participate, please come find me and I can give you a schedule for the week. Um, for everyone else, please keep praying for this to be a success for God, to bring glory to God, to bring children to God, to bring their parents to God. It's an opportunity. It's a blessed opportunity. I'm super excited about it. It's going to be super fun. I told the kids it's like Bible study meets summer fun. That's how I explained it. I don't know, but it's going to be great. Um, and then second announcement, women, I have sent out the new information for the next study. What month is this? I don't even know. June, the end of June, the last Saturday of June. <laughs> I've sent out all the information on Friday. Um, if you didn't receive it, please let me know, and then I can resend it to you, or maybe I need your email. Okay. Love you. Thank you. All right. So we've got some things going on here at New Hope Volcano. Uh, another one of the things we've got going on is the 4th of J July parade. I mentioned it last week. Uh, we have the sign-up sheet here. Oh, I better drink some water, I think. I'm... That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. I have the sign-up sheet here and also in the back. So if you want to participate, Please fill this out. Uh, it's your name, phone number, email, whether you want to walk or you want to ride in the parade. And also if you are in need of a t-shirt. Uh, if you have your t-shirt from last year, then perfect. You're all set, ready to go. Just show up and we'll start marching. If you need a t-shirt, then please uh, fill out the, the sign-up sheet in the back. Um, as most of you know, it's an awesome, awesome event where we get to go and share the love of the Lord with the community. We march together as one church. Uh, we're not the only church there, so um, the love of the Lord is permeating throughout Volcano Village. The second announcement is before you sign the sign-up sheet and you are in need of a shirt and you are a size large, is that anyone here this morning, size large in need of a shirt? <laughs> Wade, we got one for you. And Jeannie, we got one for you. Oh, you got to sign up. <laughs> we'll order one for you. We'll order one for you. And Jeannie in the back. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's all the announcements that I have. We're going to call our sister Chris up to the stage. She has a bunch of announcements for you this morning. God loves you. That's the number one announcement. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, tomorrow is Monday, the first day of Backyard Kids Club. Yeah. 9 a.m., yeah? 9 a.m. Um, and also people will be getting together to pray for you and Backyard Kids Club. So if you need some prayer and you all need prayer, put it in the bowl back there and someone will pray for you. Wednesday Bible study, 5 o'clock, yeah. right here, dinner, I recommend it. Thursday hula, 5 o'clock, right here. If you're interested, um, give Keala your number so she can contact you just in case, you know, something <coughs> happens. Um, and men and women are invited, yes. Um, and you do not have to dance, although it's lovely dancing, definitely. 
but you can just come for exercise and praise. Um, Friday morning ninja yard ninjas, 8 a.m. right here. Yes, yes. And Friday night, celebrate recovery. Yes, right here at 6 o'clock. Um, I don't know what to tell you, but I recommend it. You should come. It's uh, completely confidential and anonymous, so I can't tell you who's here. Maybe everyone around you is coming. Oh, mm. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Um, they should, yes. Men's ministry is always the third Saturday at 9 a.m. That will be June 22nd. And women's ministry is always the last Saturday, only on Zoom. So you have to get the info from Stacy at 8 a.m. That's June 29th. Yes, yes, exciting. Um, the 4th of July parade is only four Thursdays from this coming Thursday. So... I don't know about you, but July seems way off. Yeah, four weeks. So get prepared. And it's so much fun to walk in a parade, be in a parade. You know, if you haven't done it, do it. It's awesome. Uh, discipleship class is continuing. 12 o'clock next door. Right? Yes, yes. Awesome. I know you're praying for Backyard Kids Club. The theme is Jesus changes everything. Oh, following Jesus changes everything. And Stacy, I'm sorry, Sandy in the purple here is also in charge. So if you have any questions that you want to help out or specific prayers, you can talk to them. We did have a whole calendar of specific prayers in the back. If you want to just pick that up, pray one every hour. Catch up. Um, <laughs> we are currently on YouTube Live. We are only going to be on YouTube Live um, through July until I get back. I'll still be here next week. Don't worry. Um, and then I'll be on the continent visiting my family. Um, and uh, some people will be taking over YouTube Live. So if you're on YouTube right now, be very patient with them because it's a lot easier from then Zoom, though. Um, you can also find all of our past services all the way back to 2020 on our YouTube channel, New Hope Volcano. Dot, New Hope Volcano. Yes. And uh, we are also at newhopevolcano.com where you can find uh, more recent messages, the notes for the week, a lot of other things, including fabulous blogs written by Pastor and Lonnie primarily, but sometimes some other people. If you can remember all the way back to when we used to pass out papers and it would have pastors writing in it. Now it's in a blog because he's a great writer. He is. Yep. Um, I also send out a weekly email. If you'd like to get that email, I need your email address. And I hope you're thinking of ways that you can help serve. Oh, the um, thrift shop is closed until September. Yes. And all glory and honor are his. Amen. 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 So a lot going on. I didn't see too many people writing things down. So I'm assuming you're going to watch this back on YouTube later. To get all the information you need. Um, I do want to say that. I do want to say that um, I didn't stress the 4th of July sign up strong enough. And so what I mean by that is if you need a shirt and you're going to participate, you need to fill out the sign up sheet today. Okay. <laughs> Don't leave because we need to put the order in right away because it takes time to get here. So if you want to participate and you need a shirt, you need to fill out the sign-up sheet today. <laughs> okay. I may give you guys a little bit of grace, but today is a good day to do it. Get it out of the way. All right. Um, also, the third Saturday of the month is the 15th of June this month for men's ministry. So we're two more, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, I believe men's ministry and finally uh wednesday night bible study we are finishing up the book of acts we're on the last chapter we made it it was an awesome awesome study uh, so if you're going to be joining us this wednesday for the first time we'll be studying the final chapter in acts then we will taking be taking one week break and then we will be coming back to watch the chosen and so for those of you who've been here for a while or, or, or been here before you know that We've watched every season of The Chosen. Season four just came out, and so we will be watching that here on our during our Wednesday night Bible studies. Uh, and that is an awesome, fun time. 
what we like to do is we, we watch the episode and then we kind of discuss afterwards because, um, you know, we kind of want to filter it through the Bible to make sure that what we're seeing replicates what the Bible's saying. And then we have a, a deep discussion about it. So it's a good time. And that'll be in two weeks. And I'll keep making that announcement so you don't miss out. So I think that's it for announcements. That was quite a bit, quite a bit of announcements. We're about to collect the tithes and offerings. And like our sister Chris said, uh, we have a website, newhopevolcano.com. It's a cool, stylish, flashy website. Not, not really, but it's a good website where you can get a lot of information. And if you want to give your tithe or your offering online, you can do it that way. You go to the website. You click on the hamburger menu. There's a uh, link that you can click give online. You can give your tithe or your offering that way. If you're in the building and you want to give your tithe or your offering, we have an offering bowl in the back where um, Kea is standing. You can drop your tithe or your offering into the bowl that way. Uh, so we say all of that, of course, just to say that if you are visiting us here for the first time, please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning so thankful, so humbled, so blessed, Lord. Blessed for the gift of life. Blessed for the relationship that we have with you through your Son, Christ Jesus. And we want to thank you this morning, Lord. We want to give you praises for all that you do in our lives, for knowing what we need before we even ask for caring for us, for having a plan for our lives to give us a future and a hope. And so, Lord, this morning we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance, and we pray that we use it according to your will. We thank you for this church campus that we can come and gather and worship you this morning, that we can come and fellowship together with one another. We love you, O oh Lord. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Hallelujah. So good morning, my wonderful church family. I have been blessed with the opportunity to share the word of God with you this morning. Before I do that, before I get into the message, though, I did want to say something about tithes and offerings, you know. I know it's sometimes an uncomfortable thing to talk about, especially in church. And I've shared with you before that it's all, I've always had an awesome experience here at the church because from the first day I came here, the message was, please give with a cheerful heart. And um, Pastor Ray never um, said directly to me that, hey, this is our protocol or this is the way it goes. But the Bible says, right, Paul says, that you should give what you have decided in your heart and to not give reluctantly or to give under compulsion, but to give with a cheerful heart. And that comes from 2 Corinthians, and that's kind of uh, where we come from when we, when we uh, collect the tithes and the offerings. And the truth is that God blesses us so that we are able to bless others. The truth is we could, we could be in anybody's home and have church in anybody's home, but the Lord has blessed us with this building, this campus, this place where we can gather. He's blessed all of you and I to be able to give so that we can have electricity, so that we can have sound and microphones, and that we can have Zoom, and that we can reach more people, and that we can come, we can share a meal together, break bread. And so that's the, the blessing of the Lord, and that's the generosity of all of you in giving your tithes and your offerings. Now, it's kind of weird that I start a message off this way, but I do have something I want to share with you. And if you were here Wednesday night, I left you with a cliffhanger because I said I had an awesome encounter this past week. And I don't want to share it Wednesday night because I want to share it on Sunday with everybody. And um, God is so good and he is so amazing. And Chris, you will appreciate this story more than anybody else here this morning. But on Thursday, my son had a hoike, which is like a May Day program where they get together and they share what they learned 
for the school year, they sing. And I, I, I ran into a classmate of mine there whose son goes to the school. And I saw him, but I was focused on my son. You know what I mean? I, I have no time to talk stories right now. My son, my son is about to you know, present his presentation. And so I'm focused on my son. My son finishes, and then I'm standing on the side, and my classmate approaches me. And he's my classmate from like sixth grade, from Kiao Intermediate School. And if you went to Kiao Intermediate, you know what I'm talking about, you know, for life. And so, um, so he approached me. And we started talking about all of our old friends. How's this guy doing? How's that guy doing? And we went down the list of all the friends that we had and all the friends that we knew. And then uh, we were kind of standing there. And I turned to him and I said, so what? Uh, church? You go church? And he looked at me. He's like, well, we dabble a little bit. Sometimes we go. My, you know, my wife wants to go. And then I said, oh, okay, okay. Well, I stay at. And he said, yeah, I know. You stay at Volcano. You stay at Volcano. I was like, oh, how you know? How you know that? And he said, um, well, my mom, uh, during COVID or before COVID, she's been battling with cancer. And during COVID, she found us online, on Zoom. And so she's been watching on Zoom. And Chris, I don't know if you remember the name Charlene Durking. So that's my friend's mother. And she's been watching on Zoom. And so she told him, Oh, I, I like this one young pastor, you know, he's, he's, he's funny and, and, you know, and so she showed it to him and she's like, and he said, Ma, that's my friend from intermediate school. And he, and he couldn't believe that I, I was up here talking to you guys and speaking to his mother. And so I was like, wow, the mom is on Zoom. I know that name Charlene every time we go and greet. And so I told him, oh, when I see her this Sunday, I'm going to tell her hello, and I'm going to let her know that, you know, we know each other. And he said, well, it's funny that you mentioned that because we just lost her on Thursday. We just lost her on Thursday. And, um, and he said that this church was such a blessing to her, even though she wasn't able to come into the building. She was able to watch on Zoom, and it'd be a blessing for her. And so when uh, they went, they went to, uh, I think it was Dodo Mortuary, they asked, does she go to church? And they said, yes, she does. She goes to New Hope Volcano. And, um, and so they put our information down, and, they, and then he asked, would you be willing to do the service? I'm getting thick and skin already. But I said, of course, I would be willing to do that. Of course, as I would for anyone, you know, any brother or sister in Christ, no problem. Um, but my point is, I have a lot of points, but I guess to, to start off, it's like we wouldn't even have Zoom if not for your generous giving. And so because of that, we're able to have Zoom and we're able to touch lives. And um, we, he was blown away of how our lives connected again. And it's only because of Jesus, right? There's no other reason why we would have connected other than Jesus being in my life and in his mother's life. And so um, that was my amazing encounter that I had this past Thursday. We're all a part of it because we're all a part of this body. And so that was just an amazing thing that happened, and I just felt so blessed. Uh, but getting to this morning's message, <laughs> this, amen, amen. This morning's message is entitled, Guard Your Heart. And there's a lot that comes with that when we hear that. There's a lot that goes with it. We are called to love God with all of our heart, right? Jesus commands that. Jesus says that that's the greatest commandment. But what exactly does that mean, to love God with all your heart, right? What does that mean? Does that mean we come to church on Sunday? Does that mean we come to church on Wednesday and Friday and Thursday and Saturday and all the day? What does it mean to love God with all of your heart? That's something that we're going to look at this morning, and that's something that we should think about often in our lives. Um, Jesus, when asked what the greatest commandment is in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Now, um, for me, as a Christian man, the most important thing in my life 
is that my wife and my son find salvation in Christ. As a pastor, the most important thing in my pastoral life is that each and every one of you find salvation in Christ. And not just find salvation, but to have a fruitful life uh, in your salvation. And so those things are the most important to me as a man, a Christian man, and as a pastor. And Jesus says that the number one greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your heart. And Jesus was quoting a scripture from Deuteronomy because the people he was speaking to knew the text. And Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, because we've heard this commandment over and over, but it comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, where the Lord gave Moses this command. And Moses said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And then he says, These commands that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. So we are to love God with all of our heart, and his command should be upon our hearts. Okay? So Jesus was quoting the command from Moses, and he shared that uh, Moses was sharing with Israel. And the common denominator here seems to be that loving God is a matter of the heart. Okay? And here's a fun fact. The heart is mentioned 826 times in the Bible, and the brain is mentioned zero times. Okay? I mean, that's not really fair. That's not really fair because the Bible does mention the mind, the mind, as in renewing of the mind, right? The Bible mentions the mind 450 times, but that's still almost half as less as it does mention the heart. The Bible speaks to the heart uh, twice as much as it speaks of the mind. And when the Bible speaks of the heart, it's not referring to the organ that's pumping blood through our bodies. It's referring to who we are as people. In the Bible, the heart is considered the seat of life and strength. Hence, it means the mind, the soul, the spirit, or one's entire emotional nature and understanding. We read a lot about the heart in the Bible because in biblical times, it was thought that our decisions, our feelings, and thought process came from the heart. The heart in the Bible was thought to be some sort of control center, controlling our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts. Uh, a control center from which all of our decisions were made. So when we read about the heart in the Bible, it's about the place where we have our will, our attitude, our intentions, and which is the source of your thoughts, your actions, and your words. So isn't it amazing what flows from the heart? All of these things. It's what makes us up. The heart is the core of who you are as a person, and your heart is essentially you, who you are. Okay? So we look into the Bible to see how the Bible describes the heart. Remember, it's mentioned 826 times. So the first way the Bible describes the heart is, number one, that the heart is deceitful. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, the word says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Our hearts can deceive us at times. And we've all experienced this at one time or another, where we have been led by our deceitful desires of our hearts. And we see it happen in the Bible when King David sent Uriah, one of his best soldiers, and some say a good friend, off to war so that he could have Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, to himself. David knew it was wrong to send Uriah to the front lines of a battle that he could not win, but he did it because his heart deceived him. 
Our hearts can deceive us by making us think uh, that we need something that we don't, right? A new car, a new home, shoes, a purse, whatever it may be, tools, lawnmower, that we need these things and we don't have the money for it, but we have to have it, right? Our heart is compelling us to get these things. Our heart can deceive us by allowing us to be in a bad relationship or get into a bad relationship. Or our heart can deceive us by leaving a marriage when it can still be worked out. But our heart is telling us, this is not fair. This is not right. So I'm going to leave. Rather than going to the word, we believe our hearts. And uh, the Bible says that our hearts are deceitful and it can mislead us. Um, the second description of our hearts in the Bible is in contrast to that, it's joyful. Our hearts are described as joyful in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, the word says, a joyful heart is good medicine. So having a joyful heart is a description of our heart in the Bible. Writers of the New Testament tell us time and time again to be joyful and to rejoice even in the midst of storms. Can you imagine? To be joyful, to count it pure joy, to rejoice even when you're going through tough times. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. Um, I don't think it's in your notes, but I'll be reading to you. And this is from the Amplified, which I enjoy reading from. It says, And not only this, but with joy... Let us exult in our sufferings and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble produces patient endurance. And endurance, proven character, meaning spiritual maturity, and proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Such hope in God's promises never disappoint us, because God's love has been abundantly poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So we can rejoice in our trials because we have this great hope in salvation and because God's love has been abundantly poured into our hearts. So when everything is going crazy all around us, when things seem a shamble or a mess, we can count on the love of God that he has poured into our hearts to rejoice in knowing that we have hope in Christ for our salvation. Isn't that amazing? No matter what is going on around us, having a joyful heart is good medicine for our souls because it ultimately gives us hope. A hope that never disappoints because our hearts are full of God's love. So, to be joyful is knowing who we are in God and knowing what God has in store for us. The third way that the Bible describes the heart is number three, it's pure. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, uh, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purity of the heart means being made clean through the Spirit and the Word. We must put God first in every thought, in every word, and every action. Yes, of course, sin will try to come in and enter. But staying in God's word, acknowledging our sins, repenting when we sin, and asking for his forgiveness will guide us to a pure heart. It's when we live in that way, when we seek God, we seek his forgiveness, that we can attain a pure heart. And a pure heart is exactly what God is looking for. God can work with someone who has a pure heart. And it's funny because we're finishing up our study in the book of Acts on Wednesday night. And one of the biggest conversions in Christianity is the one we see that happens to the Apostle Paul, who was once Saul. But uh, before he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul was Saul who, were, who was persecuting Christians. Paul was on his way to Damascus with a letter from the high priest 
giving him the full authority to arrest anyone who anyone who followed Jesus in the city of Damascus. And remember, Paul, who was Saul at the time, was a Pharisee, and he was devout, a devout follower of the law. He went by the letter of the law. And when Jesus came to bring a new teaching and a new way of life, he was enraged because he, be he believed with his whole heart that Jesus and anyone who followed Jesus was blaspheming God. And so Saul was upset. And this doesn't make him a bad guy because I truly believe that he believed that he was defending the honor and glory of God at that time. So he persecuted Christians to the letter of the law. Then when he encountered Jesus and he had full evidence of Jesus as the Messiah, he then did a 180 and defended Jesus with the same exact zeal that he had for the law. And he was completely convinced and completely sold out for the Lord. And his heart completely changed. And Paul becomes one of the greatest apostles who wrote 13 books in the New Testament. And some might even say he wrote some of the best books. <laughs> Jesus says that people with a pure heart are blessed for they shall see God. This should be the desire of our hearts each and every day. We want to see God. So we should desire a pure heart. So those are three ways that the Bible describes the heart. There are many more, but for the sake of this morning's message, those were three that I chose to share with you. And so if our heart is so important, if our heart makes up who we are, then it's important to guard our hearts, to protect our hearts. And why is it important to protect our hearts? It's because it's who we are. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 27 speaks of this exactly. And we'll be breaking it down this morning because in reading those passages, the writer, uh, King Solomon, gives us four ways that we can guard and protect our hearts. And we'll be covering that this morning. Um, and we'll start with number one in your notes. Uh, the first way that we can protect our hearts is to make God's wisdom a priority in our lives. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 23, the word says, My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. They are not to escape from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So you see what he's saying here is pay attention, wake up, look, listen, open your ears, open your eyes. Don't take your eyes off of what I'm about to say. Keep them in your heart for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their body. And then he says, watch over your heart with diligence for from it flow the springs of life. Watch over your heart with diligence. So we need to make God's priority, uh, God's word a priority in, a li in our lives. And Proverbs is a great place to start. The writer of majority of the books is King Solomon, whom God blessed with wisdom. And we find here in chapter four that he says to pay attention, to be aware, to take notice, to open our ears and our eyes and don't let the word of God escape our sight. Do we value the word of God in this way? Do we value the word of God in this way? Do we give it our full attention? Do we open our ears to it? Do we keep our eyes set upon the word of God? He goes on to say, keep God's word in the midst of our hearts. Study it. Remember it. Treasure it. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be as well. Do you treasure God's word? Because if you do, God's word will be found on your heart. God's word will be found on your heart. 
And like our message says this morning, guard your hearts to be mindful of what's going into it and what's coming out of it. King Solomon goes on to say about God's word that it is life for those who find it. And he goes on to say to uh, watch out for your heart with all diligence. Examine it, inspect it, sift it, align it with the word of God for springs of life flow from it. If we love someone, we will listen to what they have to say, correct? We love our spouse, we'll listen to what they have to say. We love Pastor Ray, we're going to listen to what he has to say, right? If we love God, then we're going to listen to what he has to say. You know, we came to one of those um, one of those meetings with Pastor Henry a year or two ago, and he was sharing about the transfiguration, and he said that, the very last words that God ever says in the Bible, if you look, the very last audible words from God in the Bible, he says, this is my son, listen to him. That's God's last words that he's ever audibly said in the Bible. This is my son, listen to him. If we love Jesus, we will listen to him. Guard your hearts from evil worldly desires by filling it up with the word of God. Uh, not in your notes, but in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says this about the word of God. God's word is living and active, right? And we know that because we experience that when we read God's word, it speaks to us. It's alive. It guides us. It leads us. And we've said many times before, we read one scripture today, it speaks to us. We read that same scripture two years later. It speaks to us in a brand new way. And that's because it's living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, and is piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of bone and marrow. And this is what else it says about God's word. It's able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God's word will be able to judge the thoughts and intentions of our heart. So that's why making God's word a priority in our lives is the first way that we can guard our hearts. The second way we can guard our hearts is number two, by guarding our mouth. Proverbs chapter four, verse 24, uh, continuing on in this, in this chapter, the writer writes, rid yourself of a deceitful mouth and keep devious speech far from you. Be careful. Be careful about what you're saying. The Bible says that the tongue can speak life or it can speak death. That's how powerful the words that come out of our mouth are. We must be careful not to mislead, to lie, to put people down with our words. And the more we speak, the more we reveal what is really in our hearts. Isn't it funny how that works? The more we speak, the more we reveal what's really in our hearts. And for this reason, me personally, I like to be upfront and I like to uh, be open. And sometimes I give myself away because I'll walk into Bible study and be like, I didn't study this week. And I pray that I may find grace with that honesty rather than come in and try and deceive you like I did something I didn't do. But I like to be open and upfront so that I, I'm not deceitful. By guarding our mouth and what comes out of it, we are guarding our, house, our hearts as well. It's when we gossip, when we slander or complain or compare, this is when we defile ourselves. We think we're defiling someone else, but the truth is we are defiling ourselves. The book of Matthew chapter 15 in verse 18, the word says, but the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and those defile the man. The things that come from the mouth, uh, proceed from the mouth, come from the heart and that is what will defile a man. And if I may be honest about one more thing, that there is a time in my walk when I struggled with swearing 
or cursing. And when I say struggle, I don't mean I struggled with it. What I mean is I struggled when you would do it. <laughs> when I would hear other people do it, I didn't struggle with it. One of the first thing the Lord delivered me from was swearing. He took that right out of my mouth. Right away, before I even understood the word the way that I do now, he took cursing and swearing away from me. But when I hear, heard other people swear is when I struggled. And I've come only recently to discover that the reason for that is because I was delivered from that. So I set the bar up here. And because I stopped swearing and you guys didn't stop swearing, I was judging people. I was judging people because it wasn't coming up to my standard. Although this was my standard for swearing, but everything else was a mess in my life. Everything else was a mess in my life. And I would look at people and say, oh, they say they're a Christian, but they can't even control their tongue. And I would judge them. And I, and I would, um, 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 anyway. <laughs> I think I should have prefaced this whole thing by saying, this is an example of what not to do, is, is really what I mean. I have much more empathy now for God's children. Okay, here's my point. As a young, spiritually growing Christian, the impression that I got from Christians who swore or cursed was a negative one. I was still new in my walk, but when I heard other Christians swearing, it gave me a negative feeling. And it was a stumbling block, so to speak, because I was so young in my walk still. So we need to be mindful of the impact of our words towards other people, right? Because you might not think anything of it. You might think, oh, I just swear when I get mad, or I just say certain things. You know, it's not my fault. You made me mad. I've heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're saying impacts those around us. So we need to guard our mouths of what we're saying. And when we guard our mouth and what comes out of it, we are guarding our hearts as well because we are thinking about what we're saying before we say it. And if it's not edifying to anyone, then we remove it from our hearts and we address it. Okay, It's something that needs to be addressed. The third way that we can guard our hearts uh, according to the book of Proverbs, is number three is to guard our eyes. We guard our hearts by guarding our eyes. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. Let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. The Bible says to make God's word a priority and to be careful of what we say and then focus on what you have gained from the word of God. Look straight ahead, not left not right. Don't worry about what's happening on CNN. Don't worry about what's happening on Fox News. Don't worry about what your co-worker is saying about the boss. Don't worry about that. Keep your eyes straight and focus on the narrow gate and the straight path because that's all we need to worry about and focus on. <clears throat> Luke chapter 11 verse 34, the word says, the eye is the lamp of your body when your eye is clear, your whole body is full of life. But when it is bad, your body also is full of darkness. And Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees here in this verse um, that they should see that he is the Messiah of the scriptures. The eye in this case is the word of God. If they could understand what they were reading, then they would understand that this is Jesus, the Messiah that they have been waiting for. And if they were to understand that, then their whole body would be full of life. But when we don't understand scripture, or we don't know who Jesus is, or who we are in Jesus, we live in darkness. And this scripture really comes to life when we are faced with trials. This scripture comes to life. It unfolds right before our eyes when we are faced with trials when we don't know who we are in Christ, when we don't know what Christ did for us, when we don't look through the scriptures, that is when we're faced with stress, depression, we feel defeated, we feel like we have no hope, 
But when we look to the scriptures, when we understand who we are, when we walk in the victory that Christ already won, then we have hope, we have joy. And so this scripture comes to life in our trials, much like the Apostle Paul, who was in prison for two years, yet he held on to the hope given to him by God. So set our eyes on Jesus just in the same way that Peter did when he walked on water, right? Peter had his eyes set on Jesus, and he was able to walk on water. As soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. The same thing applies for all of us. As soon as we take our eyes off Jesus, we're going to begin to sink. We're going to begin to fall into worldly habits. We're going to be easily deceived. Our heart will mislead us. We have to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and the Word of God. And that is the third way that we can protect our hearts. And the fourth and final way that we can guard our hearts this morning from the book of Proverbs is for number four, to guard our feet. Proverbs 4, chapter 26 and 27. Watch the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Do not turn right or turn left. Turn your foot from evil. Again, as we focus on the narrow gate, we should walk upon the straight path. And when we are careful to stay on the straight path, all of our ways will be established. The word says, the application for this scripture is that in everything that we do, all of our decisions, big and small, take it to the Lord in prayer and in scriptures. Don't make decisions based off of emotion. Remember when we said earlier that the heart is described as deceitful. One of the ways that it will deceive us is through our emotions. Anger, jealousy, resentment, bitterness, they are all tools of the enemy to get us to respond in a worldly way. Our emotion tells us that, oh, it's going to feel so good to tell this person off. You know, I, I recently had an experience in Volcano Village, believe it or not, where I was driving on Haunani Road and there was a delivery truck uh, at the general store and it was sticking out a little bit. So I went around the truck and I came and someone was turning and they gave me a stink eye because I went uh, in the other lane. And what is so funny is that for an instant, I'm not going to lie, I'll be honest, for an instant, my heart raced a little bit. And, and my old self stepped on the brake like I was going to do something. You know? And I stepped on the brake, and then I let the brake go, and I drove off. And I had a conversation with myself because... I stepped on the brake like I was going to like tell the guy, you know, we're going to fight or something. I'm not going to fight. You know what I mean? I got a bum knee. You know, I'm not doing. <laughs> uh, but you see how quickly the heart will deceive you. You see how quickly. Instantly it said, this guy gave you stink eye. You can't take that. Right? But the truth is, I had my eyes focused on the Lord. And as I made the turn. As I made the turn, I kind of chuckled to myself because no matter how old that guy was, my knee is so bad that there's nothing I could have done. So I laughed and I was like, you need to let this go. You need to get over this. But our heart will deceive us and trick us based upon our emotions because he invoked a reaction out of me and I wanted to react emotionally. So don't be quick to react and to get off the path of righteousness, right? What good would have came of me getting out of the car? Nothing. Not one good thing. And don't allow yourself to be pulled in different directions based upon your emotions. That is what the enemy wants. So, our emotions deceive us by telling us to get even with someone. Oh, now they, now they know how I feel. Isn't that something we say? Now you know how I feel. Psalm chapter 119, verse 105, the word says, your word, O oh Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Amen. Ever try painting a room without splattering yourself with paint? Or playing ball without getting dirty? Or washing the car without getting wet? It's hard. How about staying pure 
and undefiled, living life among sinners and not getting spotted, right? How do we do it? We have to be mindful and we have to be cautious to guard our hearts. We have to take care of it. We have to nurture it. The ingredients of life come into us and flow out of us from various channels. Three of them are given special attention here, the mouth, the eyes, and the feet. All of these streams of life come from one fountain, and that's the heart. The godly life and even the discipline, disciplined life begins in the heart. The heart is where concentrated effort needs to be given. Eventually, the mouth and the eyes will reveal what is in the heart. And if we carefully observe ourselves, it is not difficult to find where we need to place special attention. Would you agree? And when we do these four things to guard our hearts from darkness, we are walking in the light. And from our hearts, we, as well as others, will see the springs of life flowing from it. And then we can all take a big drink from the living water that is Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives in us. Amen. If we can bow our heads. Father, I thank you so much for your word. It is alive and it is active. And we thank you for speaking to us through your word, Father. We thank you for the direction of the Holy Spirit that helps lead us and guide us as we walk through this world. I thank you, Lord, for giving us discernment of right from wrong. That, yeah, I could have stopped the car and get out, Lord, but the Holy Spirit told me better to keep on going, staying focused, and bringing glory to you, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for your word that gives us the instruction we need to guard our hearts, to think about what we're saying, what we're see seeing, what we're hearing. Lord, we know that there are more than one way to guard our, our hearts, our ears our eyes, our mouth. It may be the information we're receiving, things that we're watching, things that we are saying. We pray that you give us the strength we need to continue to guard our hearts, Lord. We're so grateful to you this morning. Congregation, we have reached the point in the message where we like to offer those who do not have a relationship with Christ Jesus and want to have one, to be able to begin one now, this morning. And so we do this every Sunday. We offer what is called a prayer of salvation. And this is offered to those who do not have a relationship, but are interested in beginning one, but don't know how to start one. And so I want to share with you, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. John chapter 3 and verse 16, um, the word says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so if that is you this morning, that you are ready to believe, and to begin a relationship with Christ Jesus, we want to help you say this prayer, asking Jesus to come into your life. Now, just by saying the words doesn't automatically grant you salvation, but the belief in your heart, the faith, we are saved by grace through faith. Your faith is what will save you. And so if you're ready to receive Jesus, please say this prayer after me. And I want to ask everyone else in the body of Christ as an edification to say this, to come alongside, to come in agreement with anyone saying this prayer for the first time. Please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank, you Jesus. thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm, a I'm a sinner. I have done lots of things on my own. I have not always asked for your help 
or your advice. I want to change that now. This morning, I recognize you as my forgiver. And I want to follow you as my leader. Come into my life. And as best as I know how, for as long as I know how, I will follow you. So now I say, so that you can hear me, so that I can hear me, so that my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for those who have said that prayer for the first time. I thank you for the free gift of salvation found in Christ Jesus. It is not of works, Lord. And we are so grateful for that because there isn't enough things in the world that we could do to earn our way into heaven. But instead, you sent your son, Christ Jesus, to pay the price in full for us so that we may have eternal life with you. And that great hope is what we cling on to this morning and each and every day of our lives. We love you, O oh Lord. We thank you for the food that's been provided this morning. We pray that it be nourishing to our minds and our bodies. We pray a blessing over our time of fellowship, Lord, that your presence be upon us, that we share the love that you have shared with us with one another. We love you so much, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you all the praise. And we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this marks the final conclusion to our Sunday morning service. We're going to sing one more song. If you feel like singing, you can stay in the room. You can sing. If you're ready for uh, refreshments, you can make your way out with the door there on my left. I think everything is ready to go. Uh, if you're going to leave and take advantage of the rest of the day, uh, I want to remind you, as I do most weeks, be careful when you get to Highway 11 as cars go really quickly up and down the hill there. So be careful when you get up to the highway. Whatever you ch decide to do, God bless you and have a great June.
Thank you.